This is Carl Friedrich Gauss, 1777-1855, called the Prince of Mathematicians. Gauss invented least squares estimation. He wanted to learn the orbit of a newly discovered asteroid series, but the discoveries, the observations, were only from a small part of its orbit, then it vanished by the sun, and there wasn't enough data to calculate where it would reappear. Many astronomers competed for the honour of finding it, this was the Kaggle of the 1800s. Gauss solved the problem by inventing least squares estimation. And he invented Gaussian elimination, which is the basic algorithm behind the least squares solver that we've been using. But Gauss also believed that maximum likelihood estimation was the only sound and rational basis for estimation. And so he set out to discover if there was a link between the two types, between least squares estimation and maximum likelihood estimation. Let's recap. Least squares estimation is for when we have a model like this. Yi is beta 1 e1 i plus dot 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 plus bk eki plus epsilon i, where yi is the response for record i. e1i up to eki are the features for record i and epsilon i is the error or residual. Least squares estimation says that to estimate the parameters beta 1 up to beta k, we should choose them so as to minimize the mean of the squared error terms. But what about maximum likelihood estimation? Maximum likelihood estimation says if we have a probability model for the response, say big yi has some distribution, dot dot dot, then the way we should estimate is we should choose the model parameters so as to maximize the log likelihood of the observed data, log likelihood of y1 up to yn, the complete data set, is equal to the sum from i equals 1 up to n log likelihood of that specific observation yi. I've left dot 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 because I haven't specified yet what the parameters are. So what probability model would be sensible here? Here's what Gauss said. Let's use the probability model yi is beta 1e 1i plus dot 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 plus beta k e k i plus normal of naught sigma squared. This has parameters beta 1 up to beta k and also sigma. Where did Gauss get this idea from? Well, another name for the normal distribution is the Gaussian distribution. Gauss thought that the estimates you get out of least squares estimation were intuitively sensible and the only reasonable answer. But he also thought that maximum likelihood estimation was the only sound and rational thing to do. So he set out to discover what type of probability model would give the answers he wanted. And he proved that the model that worked was if the errors had a normal distribution. What I want to do now is go through the maths of maximum likelihood estimation for Gauss's probability model. I won't prove the general result, I'll just work through a specific model, the Iris model that we looked at in the last two videos. And then you'll see from the algebra we go through why the result works in general. We'll go through exactly the same steps that we do for any probabilistic modeling problem. First, we write out the probability model for a single observation. Let petal length be alpha plus beta sepal length plus gamma sepal length squared plus normal of naught sigma squared. I'm just going to write it out um, with uh, condensed notation to save some writing time. I'll let y be the petal length, e be the sepal length, f be the sepal length squared. Here I've rewritten it as just a single normal distribution. There's the special property of the normal distribution that if you take a normal random variable and add a non-random value, you get another normal. We mentioned this in section 1.4 and said it's a rule that we'll be using over and over again in machine learning. Next, write out the likelihood of a single observation little y. The distribution depends on e and f2, of course, but it's a bother to write them out all the time. Now remember, don't just blindly copy out a density function from Wikipedia. You need to substitute in the parameters. 
In this case, we're substituting in alpha plus beta e plus gamma f for the mean of the distribution. Next, write out the log likelihood of the entire data set y1 up to yn. We'll assume the responses are independent. So the log likelihood of y1 up to yn is the sum of the log likelihoods of each individual response. And that's why we have a sum here. And remember, don't just blindly copy out your equation from the previous line. The previous line was about a generic response little y, whereas here we're talking about the data set little y1 up to little yn. So this equation needs to have yi and ei and fi. Next, optimize. We have four parameters that we want to optimize over. Looking at this function, I see I don't need to optimize over all four at the same time. If I keep sigma fixed and work out the maximum over alpha and beta and gamma, the answer doesn't actually depend on sigma. So that means I can maximize over alpha, beta and gamma first and then maximize over sigma. So write out the maximization over alpha, beta, gamma. We're trying to maximize the term on the right hand side, which has a minus sign in front of it. I've just removed the minus sign, so I want to minimize this expression here. Once we've got the answers for alpha, beta, and gamma, we can maximize over sigma. We want to pick sigma to maximize the entire log likelihood. And I've substituted in the answers we've already found, alpha hat, beta hat, and gamma hat. This maximization is very simple calculus. The answer is sigma hat is square root of one on n sum of ei squared. I skipped over how we actually do the minimization over alpha, beta, and gamma. What matters is that minimization over alpha, beta, and gamma is exactly least squares estimation of alpha, beta, and gamma. In other words, maximum likelihood estimation gives exactly the same estimates as least squares estimation. And there are fast algorithms for solving least squares estimation from linear algebra. In particular, there's Gaussian elimination, yet another invention from Gauss, the prince of mathematicians. In the next video, we'll go into the linear algebra behind least squares est estimation. We won't talk about the algorithms, we'll just take it for granted that there are fast Python libraries for solving it. But the useful thing about linear algebra is that it tells us how we can build up a linear model so that the parameter estimates we end up with are interpretable and answer the questions we might want to be asking about the data set. But before we go into more maths, I just want to make a few remarks about linear modeling and when not to use it. There's no reason to believe that linear models are true. No model is true. There's a saying from George Box, who was described as one of the greatest statistical minds of the 20th century. All models are wrong, but some are useful. Linear models are certainly useful because we can get them to express all sorts of patterns in the data, as we saw in the video on designing features. And it's easy to interpret the parameters from a linear model, as we'll see in the next two videos. And because they're lightning fast to fit, even fitting to huge data sets, because they're based on plain linear algebra. Gauss showed that least squares estimation is what you get if you set out to do maximum likelihood estimation on a probability model with Gaussian errors. If the Gaussian model doesn't fit the data, then it's not useful to do least squares estimation. Just before we finish, one last comment. You may have come across this sort of plot. It's called a box plot, which shows the median and spread of a distribution as well as the outliers. It's called a box plot, but it wasn't invented by box. It was invented by Mary Eleanor Speer, a statistician working at the US Census.